Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and as you can see from the title, a few people actually mentioned this film when I did the Apollo 18, Shark Night, which I rented. A lot of people said it's really bad. It's a 3.9 on IMDb, critics tore it to shreds, and I gotta say, I gotta admit man, I understand. Oh, Harley. Hole like a fucking glory hole, like a fucking hooker's hole. I understand why people did not like this film. And if you happen to like this film, that's cool. No no worries. Um, feel free to chime in as to why you liked it. But I understand why a lot of people didn't like this film. <laughs> but I saw it because, you know, I could rent it for free and, you know, give it a look, give it a chance. You know, shark movies... I, I want to like them. I like Jaws. I like Jaws 2. Jaws 3 is a guilty pleasure. Um, not Jaws 4, though. That's bad. Deep Blue Sea, I really enjoy. I really do. Maybe Jaws, Deep Blue Sea, and then Jaws 2 be my top three. Um, but there's a lot of bad ones. A lot of them I haven't seen, like Sharks in Venice with, I think, Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. That's not around here to rent, and I can't bring myself to buy that. <laughs> Uh, Shark Attack 3, look that one up on YouTube. I mean, a guy, I think that's the one where the guy's pickup line is, hey, uh, let me go home, let's go home and let me eat your pussy for you. <laughs> that's a serious line the guy uses as a pickup, and it works. Like, just look up Shark Attack 3, that's like Play 9 from Outer Space, hilarious. Um, but uh, I haven't seen a lot of them, but. I've seen clips like, uh, I had one that I remember one time I reviewed, but, you know, the novelty wore off thin. It was like Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus. I laughed at a fucking giant shark eating a fucking airplane from the sky. But, you know, just watch the clips. Novelty really fell quick. That's why I sold the DVD. But, uh, anyway, the end of this film, Shark Night. As in theaters, it was Shark Night 3D. Now, it's directed by David R. Ellis, and this guy, for the most part, I like the guy's work, I will admit. I enjoy Final Destination 2. It's probably my favorite of the series. It's a fun, entertaining film to me. Um, Cellular, I, re I reviewed Cellular. Really like Cellular with Chris Evans. I think that's a solid flick. Snakes on a Plane, I will admit, I enjoyed. I enjoy Snakes on a Plane. I saw that in a theater I had a fun time with. I enjoy the fact that, okay, here's a film. I like that they listen to people out there. Meaning that there were people looking forward to this film. It's like, no, don't make it PG. It was going to be PG-13. It was going to have this lame title. and They listened to fans. They said, you know what, we're going to reshoot, and it's going to be R-rated, and we're going to have some tits and a little bit of blood, and, you know, we're going to have a, a shock moment, like a snake biting on a guy's dick and a woman's tit, and um, the line that everybody wanted Sam Jackson to say, they had him say it for the fans. I appreciate that, going an extra mile for that. It didn't help, because the film bombed, <laughs> and not many people liked it, but I, I liked that attempt. I would like to see it, it's nice when they attempt that. And I had fun with it, you know. Um, some people should learn to listen to fans like <laughs> Steven Seagal. Like, okay, I tried to do that. Oh, <coughs> say a name, but it failed. Steven Seagal should really do that, listen to fans and stuff, you know, and some other folks out there. But uh, either way, this film got a lot of bad reviews, and like I said, I mean, I like David R. Ellis, but lately his track record has not been good. He did The Final Destination, the the fourth one, that's the one where it started with the NASCAR. Uh, was not a big fan of that movie, to be honest. Uh, he did a, a one that went straight to DVD that was okay in parts, it was called Asylum. And, you know... It was okay in parts, but I guess he's got a couple films that are raring to go. Bad Luck, Milwaukee, Humpty Dumpty, 
and so on and so forth. But uh, due to this film, I should have looked up. The writers of this film is Will Hayes and Jesse Studenberg. You guys, you know, granted, I'm not a writer. But I can honestly say, in my opinion, you guys sucked in writing. You know, and you really did. I mean, this deserves a 3.9. And I'm looking at what these guys have written. Will Hayes and Jesse Studenberg. Will Hayes, he had written some TV series called Assy McGee. Seriously, the TV series is called Assy McGee. And Best Week Ever. I haven't even heard of those fucking shows. That's Will Hayes. The other writer is Jesse Studenberg. And this guy wrote... Oh, this is his first writing job. Oh, it shows. I know I'm being harsh, but okay, I would like to, you know, you have a film that gets in the theaters in the summer, gets a wide release, even put dough in for 3D. And there's so many better horror films like Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, like Frozen, that deserve the wider release more than this film. In fact, before this, I saw this film. This is a low budget straight to cable. This was a cable movie, meaning it was made for TBS. And it's better than this movie. In fact, I'll probably review this after this one. It has its problems, but it Shark Night 3D, it's it's a very dumb plot, which usually sometimes it doesn't bother me. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If a film entertains me, then cliches and the plot being dumb, sometimes I can honestly deal with if I'm entertained because that's a big thing with a movie to be entertaining and to be honest this was not entertaining it wasn't the worst film I've seen it wasn't even the worst shark film I've seen but you know it starts off with a total ripoff of Jaws and I'm like David R. Ellis and the writers what are you guys doing why are you doing this it literally starts off with a girl out in the water and there's a guy, and instead of getting drunk and passing out on the beach, he just goes back into his little fucking dealio. You know, call it a trailer, call it whatever. And the girl, you know, gets, you don't see the shark, and she gets dragged around saying, help, help me. For some reason, the guy is not fucking hearing her or something, or whatever the fuck it was. And then the girl gets dragged down. Like, straight out of the first Jaws film. And then we're introduced to our characters. We have about seven characters. Um, we got the nerd, which is, this is without a doubt, the least convincing fucking nerd I've ever seen in my life. I'm a nerd. I got no hair. I got weird teeth. I'm a nerd. This guy's like if Chris Evans played a nerd. If Channing Tatum played a nerd. You know... Quickly loses glasses, it takes your shirt off, he's bit buff. I mean, this guy looks like a jock, not a nerd. Just because you put glasses on him, and, on the guy, and he hangs out with Joel David Moore, the lead guy from Hatchet, and you have a little scene with, oh, you know, uh, he's playing, like, fucking Xbox, and he's like, oh, what, you're red? He's like, wait, I took forever to get these points, and just, that takes more than that to say, oh, this guy's a nerd. I mean, I like the idea of a nerdy guy going up, but um, the Hills of Ice remake did that a lot better. Uh, a lot of movies have done that better. I mean, there's not a lot of movies like that, but I just this guy is literally the least convincing nerd. You know, I'm a nerd. This guy, is, I literally, it's like if you took fucking the guy who played Thor and he played a nerd. It doesn't work. And this film just full, filled with cliches. It's filled with cliches. And usually I'm not that fuss. Well, I shouldn't say usually. When I'm fussed with cliches, it's because the rest of the movie sucks. And thus the cliches become more fucking apparent. Because, like, again, you got seven kids, you got the, the quote nerd. Again, I mean, you got the lead girl, played by Sarah Paxton. You got the black guy, Malik, played by this guy, Simqua Walls. His girlfriend. 
You got this guy who for some reason once more likes to spray his fucking nuts. I have no idea why. Um, you have another girl. And then you have Joel David Moore. Who I'm not a fan of. I did not like this guy in Hatchet. Did not like this guy in Avatar. Did not like this guy in whatever the fuck. Spiral. Was that movie Spiral? I, I'm sorry. I'm not a fan of Joel David Moore. He plays the same fucking character time and time again. Um, and I'm really not liking it. And basically they go off to this girl, Sarah. This is where Sarah Paxton plays a character named Sarah. Goes off like she... It's Louisiana. and She has this uh, uh, vacation home. Her family has this vacation home by this lake. And of course they stop by at the bait shop. And you have these two hillbillies... One's played by actually Joshua Leonard from the Blair Witch Project. I'm like, oh, cool. It's nice to see Joshua Leonard. You know, he does good in the role, but I'm like, I wish he had a better role. I wish he was the lead. I really wish Joshua Leonard was the lead of this movie because I like Joshua Leonard. He'd be better as the lead. But after seeing Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which, that's a smart script and such a good horror movie, and that got nothing, and this got like, who knows how many thousands of theaters and a summer release and you know it just sucks but this one oh here's the typical two hillbillies and one the the non Joshua Leonard has a scar on his face he's got his shirt off um oh we know these hillbillies are bad like that and then they're playing around on the lake and the the, the black guy Malik is on they're pulling them along. And the black guy gets bit first. Wow. The black guy gets it first. He doesn't die first, but he's the he's the first to get bitten. Because he falls off his skis and water skis and his arm's been bitten off. And the nerd, thankfully, he's a doctor. Thank God he's a doctor. Because it's very convenient for the plot. And we gotta wrap it up. And shit, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We gotta get the fuck out of here. So um, they try to get him out there, and Malik's girl, Malik, uh, his girlfriend, decides to tag along, and then the shark just bounces the boat, boom, boom, and she falls off, because, she, she, like a dumbass, she didn't hold on like the guys told him to, and she gets bit and attacked, but you don't see anything, because it's PG-13! So, at least, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of Piranha 3D, at least I had gore and tits. See, if you can't do a movie well with your plot or your your characters, you better have some colorful ingredients, visual-wise, music-wise, gore tits. You gotta have some easy flavor, you know. If you can't have a good dinner, steak and potatoes or bacon and eggs, then have some good, you know, shit on the side, hors d'oeuvres. Uh, cheese sticks, bread sticks, good sauce, something to tide you over. And this doesn't even have that. You know. I mean, why is this PG-13? Why is it in 3D? Who gives a shit about the 3D? No one. I mean, this is Shark Knight. It doesn't say Shark Knight 3D. Whether you can play this on your Blu-ray 3D, I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to... They're Blu-ray 3D. They don't pick up Shark Knife for that experience. If that was the case, they'd pick up Piranha 3D. <laughs> I mean, it really is the case. It's like, literally, this must have been Piranha 3D. Hmm, a lot of people like Piranha. Even, you know, it's this creature feature flick. You know, a lot of critics and people... But we didn't get a lot of box office. Maybe because it was the blood and gore. So if we did PG-13, maybe we'll get more money. That seems like the intention about it. And then, weirdly enough, remember there was going to be a Piranha sequel? What happened to that movie? That movie disappeared into thin air. Disappeared into thin air. Think about it. It, it disappeared. It was going to come out in November... Of 2011, those will come out around April or March, and there's nothing about that movie now. It disappeared in the fucking thin air. But anyway, so the girl's been killed. You don't see why. 
And somehow, I guess, the shark bump in the boat somehow fucks up the equipment. So they can't do anything. So they had to jump off, as well as the guy with, you know, no arm. And, you know, okay, good explosion. It hits to these things, these barrels, and it blows up. Boom. And they're on shore now. As I man, we gotta get this guy to a hospital, Malik, who has uh, one arm. They've, you know, fixed it with a tourniquet and stuff. And lo and behold, Joshua Leonard and the other hillbilly, they come by. And it's like, whoa, you know, we'll help you. I'm like, why are you trusting these guys? These guys tried to pick a fight with you before. And another stupid thing, which I'll get to in a little bit. So this other girl, Joel David Moore, decide, okay, they're going to go with, because they're going to go and get help. Just by the way, this, you, cell phones don't work. There are no landlines for whatever reason. There's no landlines. Cell phones don't work, so they can't, you know, get to anybody, tell anybody. Um, and, of course, you later find out that Joel David Moore and the girl, the two hillbills are bad guys. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Um, and they throw Joel David Moore aside. He swims, try, climbs up a tree, and somehow a shark flies and grabs the guy, Joel David Moore, and he dies. But again, it's PG-13. You don't see anything. Um, but the CGI shark jumps and grabs him and... Uh, and then they have this cage the two hillbillies have this cage they put the girl in there and I think they said it was cookie cutter sharks which I've never heard of before but of course you know CGI and I guess they're like big, they look like big fucking electric eels that's what they look like or eels and just you know like killer but I guess PG-13 I don't even know if R rating would have helped this movie, to be honest. I mean, it would have helped, but I don't, it would not have saved it. Uh, the, I don't even know how to do it. This, this is so stupid, what happened. What the f okay. The reason all this is happening is that a bunch of sharks, hammerheads, other sharks have been dumped in this lake. You find out because uh, the two hillbillies and the nice sheriff, who's actually evil, they have put cameras on the sharks because they want to film people getting eaten by sharks because they've seen faces of death and shark week. And they figure. People will pay the top dollar to see people killed by sharks. I know someone's going to say it's different. So they actually reference Faces of Death and Shark Week and they go, you know how many people watch Shark Week? You know, it's been on for so long and and uh, I'm like, That is such a stupid fucking plot. I'm sorry. It's fucking stupid. So, wait a minute. So, you don't get this footage. And, okay, you release it. First off, someone's going to think maybe it's enough. They're going to send it to some policeman, FBI, something like that. Now, the footage, you don't be able to tell who it is. Somehow, some way, they don't see a face or the image recognition. Um, oh, let alone missing persons. Well, you know what? I had a daughter, I had a buddy, and they all went missing. Oh, yeah, they all went to this one area. This one area. 
hmm, let's investigate. Let's get the FBI in there and, and like, hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, man, CSI would fucking get these guys in a heartbeat. It's such a stupid idea. I just... I know people are like, oh, it's not that stupid. Explain to me how that's that stupid. Ultimately, the black guy dies because uh, the guy who sprays his nuts um, is going to help him go across with a, on a jet ski. And the guy's like, you know, he, I'm slowing him down, so he sacrifices himself. And the guy with the jet ski, the shark, literally CGI shark, jumps out of the water like this and grabs the guy and goes into the water. I went, wow, I did not know sharks did that. Um, they probably roar like a lion, too, if we know our logic from Jaws 4. Um, <laughs> uh, and it ends with, uh, you have two left, and one is tied like straight out of hostel, it's tied to a chair, and the chair is having fun. Lifts him up and dunks him and lifts him up again, and you know the nerd gets out of it. You know, nerd. Uh, Joshua Leonard basically gets a knife thrown at him by his own friend, because the nerd gets Joshua Leonard, and the guy kills his buddy. They have a fight. Uh, one thing leads to another. The, the lead girl is trapped in a shark cage. Um, the guy gets killed by the shark, and the nerd grabs like one of those guns. If you ever seen Deep Star Six, that gun that you know hits you and it explodes, like pumps air, and it has one of those guns that zoom and blows up the shark. Then the nerd and the girl and the dog are safe, and ten minutes worth of credit. Well, five minutes worth of credits. And then after the credits, it's a shitty fucking music video by the cast called Shark Bait, Shark Bite, Bite Me, and the Ass, whatever. I know this 20 some minute review, uh, I know it's too long, but god damn. This film sucks. Opening and ripping off jaws, cliches up the ass. Is there anything good about this film? Some of the cast I like. Um, I like Malik, the black guys, uh, Cinqua Walls. I think he played his role well. His character was actually, I would have liked it if this guy was actually the lead. Or if he became the lead. Because he was really the most interesting character to me. He really was. Because he wasn't just a yo dog, you know, typical cliche. And then, like, he got his arm bitten off, his woman's been killed, he says, fuck it, takes a fucking harpoon, spear, goes into the water, gets attacked by a hammerhead, and kills the fucking hammerhead. Kills it. And then he's being, you know, driven, he's like, man, you know, I'm not gonna let you die for me, and he sacrifices himself. He was, like, the best character in the movie. So, of course, he had to die. Uh, but the actor did a really good job. I'm trying to see what else he's done. Cinco Walls, Malik. Um, also, I didn't mind Joshua Leonard. I mean, I liked him as an actor. I just wish he had a better role. Uh, the... Also, uh, the guy who played the sheriff, he was actually good. He's a nice guy, but then you find out he's one of the bad guys. There's an actor named Donald, Donald Logue. He was on the TV show Grounded for Life, but I didn't watch that TV show. You may remember him from Blade. He played the character of Quinn. That's the guy at the beginning that Blade fucked up, and um, Blade kept cutting his arm off. And at the end, Blade cuts his head off, and they would go, grab his sunglasses and go to town. Again, the character of Quinn and Blade. You probably remember him most from that. But Donald Logue has been in a few stuff. I liked him as the sheriff. And the girl, the lead girl, Sarah Paxton, uh, she was fine. But the rest of the cast you don't care about. But, again, the lead guy I did not care about. And he was the least, un he was the most unconvincing nerd I've seen in the longest time. Um, 
the other characters were fucking forgettable. The uh, Joel David Morning give a fuck. It's PG-13, so the kills are routine and lame. There's no tension. It's not scary. The opening rips off Jaws. The cliches up the ass. The 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 why behind it is very fucking stupid. Uh, oh yeah, another stupid thing about the screenplay. Like I was going to mention this before. When Joel David Moore and the girl go with Joshua Leonard and the other hillbilly. After they've gone and the lead girl Sarah's let them go, she decides to tell the the nerd nerd a story about how. She used to be there and, you know, told this guy no, and they went swimming. She ran out of air, and the guy just stared and didn't help her. So she made it out and cut his face with a propeller. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that the other guy, Joshua Leonard, the other hillbilly, has a scar on his face and knows the Sarah character. So we pretty much know that non Joshua Leonard, the other hillbilly, is the guy that this girl hit with a propeller, and it's confirmed at the end. And this is a guy, she was drowning, and the guy didn't do anything, and stared, and didn't help her. Why the fuck would you let this guy? Take your friends to, quote, go for help. Why were you at, at all nice to this guy? He, You broke up with them and shit. He tried to... He didn't help you. He was letting you drown. He didn't help you. He didn't share air. He didn't... He let you drift away, stared at you, didn't help you. So, of course, you're going to cut him in the fucking face. And like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like, you let this fucker take your friends to get help? What the fuck? Knock on wood, what the fuck is that shit? Oh my god. <laughs> So, I know, this has gone on for fucking, damn, 27 minutes. 30 minute review for this piece of shit, man. But, it is, I'm sorry that the review is so long, but I, I can't fucking shorten it. It's, I like the guy who played Malik. He should have been the lead. Um, Sarah Passon did fine as the lead girl. Donald, Donald Law was fine as the sheriff. I like Joshua Leonard. That's it. I mean, it's a short film. It's really 80 minutes long. Um, with five minutes of credits and five minutes of a shitty music video that you don't need to see. But the stupid opening is a Jaws ripoff. The, least, the lead, again, I didn't care for the lead. And the other, other characters, the other teens, other than Malik, the sink with walls, and Sarah Paxton. The other characters didn't give a fuck about. The kills are lame. It's PG-13, so you're not going to see much. There's no tits. Gore, I mean, bloodshed is minimal. The attack scenes are laughable. I mean, CGI sharks jumping out of the water and grabbing people. If that floats your boat, go right ahead. 3D, who gives a fuck? I mean, you're not going to... 3D ain't going to help you here on home video. Because most people didn't want to see this shit in the theater. I can't blame them. Um, and, again, the idea... I've seen Face of Death and Shark Weed. We're going to dump a bunch of sharks and we're going to film people get killed and then we're going to sell it on the internet. This is... Wow. Wow. I like... Hell, why don't you just get a gun, a silencer, go up and shoot them? You know? <laughs> just get a silencer gun and go up. Thump, thump, thump. I mean... I don't think people watch Shark Week, like, nah. Yeah, but that's, that's the plot of the film, folks, so, yeah. Yeah. It's cliche, it's boring, it's mediocre, not even, it's beyond me, it's shitty. Shitty plot, shitty idea, 
Uh, the action scenes are lame. PG-13, 3D is as worthless as three dips. That's what 3D means. Three dips in your face. I don't need to see that. I'm sorry. It's not my preference. And just a crappy fucking idea and a crappy lead, crappy cast, other than those I'll give those four people, Sarah Paxton, Dono Load, the Dow Play Malik, and Synchro Walls and Joshua Leonard. Everybody else, forgettable. But yeah, this movie pass twenty five million dollar budget and it got nationwide, you know, in theaters, did not deserve it. Should have been either straight to rated R, better plot. I mean, yeah, it's different, but there's a reason why no one went with that plot before, because it's stupid. But anyway, thanks for watching, and take care. <laughs> Later.